This is Stock Gamer 007 here, and we have a couple of news articles for today. Links to all news articles and timestamp is gonna be in the description below. And don't forget, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And now let's get started. Let's begin with two pieces of news about Pokemon. The first piece of news I'll be sharing with you is that Game Freak doesn't think Pokemon will ever appear on other platforms other outside of Nintendo, not including the mobile games. <laughs> Even I could tell you this, that's not gonna happen, but let's move on to the details. Game Informer spoke with Game Freak's co-founder Junichi Masuda as part of a big feature in the latest issue. On the topic brought up is who exactly owns Pokemon. It's a bit tricky, but ultimately, Masuda highlighted that the rights lie with three companies, Nintendo, Game Freak, and Creatures. Masuda went on to talk about Game Freak relationship as a friendship. Quote unquote, everyone really knows Nintendo. It's a fair reality with the brand, and they have the very strong brand, and Pokemon being associated with that and being affiliated with the brand is very important. Game Informer did ask if Pokemon will ever appear on other platforms outside of the mobile side game presumably which is aren't developed by Game Freak. His answer is we'll see what you expect. With Pokemon at least, we really feel it is really important to be with Nintendo especially with the Pokemon titles so I don't think that will ever happen. In my opinion, first of all, Pokemon will never leave Nintendo. Nintendo will never make that happen at all because Pokemon makes most of their money other than Mario. I don't even think no other, com no other game franchise make as much money for Nintendo other than Mario. So I don't ever see that happening. Because remember, just last summer, Nintendo made billions of dollars just from Pokemon Go and they don't even control, they don't even control the whole of Pokemon name. And they made so much money. Nintendo stocks went sky high when that happened like I don't think that's ever gonna happen like Pokemon will never leave this the, the Nintendo ecosystem at all it's not like Monster Hunter that came and left it's funny that they talked about friendship like it's friendship that we're developing it's not like Nintendo saying you better make Pokemon games on a switch you better make Pokemon games on the 3ds if you ever play if you even ever put Pokemon on the PS4 you're done you're fired that's how it is, man. I'm telling you. So, let's move on to the second Pokemon news that a lot of people wanted to know but they never talked about until now on why Pokemon Grey never happened and why Game Freak is still interested in remakes. Regarding why Pokemon Grey specifically did not happen, Masuda told Game Informer, quote, A lot of people were expecting Pokemon Grey at the time. But the concept of black and white was kind of these opposing forces, a yin yang kind of thing. If we went to a gray, it would have moved away from the concept, so we decided to keep the titles there. Let's continue on the same Game Informer article, and it's about remakes of Pokemon games. Just in the past, it sounded like Game Freak won't just pump out new Pokemon games as they remain interested in revisiting past titles. Masuda said, quote, I don't think we're focused exclusively on making all new stuff. I think it's important the nostalgic factor is one thing. To give those memories, this content, and another chance, another chance to shine for new players. And as a player myself, I enjoyed that kind of thing as well. Man, I remember in 2012 after Pokemon Black and White was released and I played the game and everything, it was like I think it was in the beginning, like right before 2012 or 2012, they were talking about this huge leak of Pokemon Grey, and I really thought that it was gonna come like real, because everyone was talking about all these uh, reasons why we'll turn Grey version. I couldn't wait for this version, then they announced Pokemon Black and White too, and in, in my head, it's, I said, this don't make any sense, like, what about like, like Emerald and Platinum, it's always the third game. Even Crystal, like even before, even Yellow was the third game. It was like this only one that had two versions of the third game. It kind of makes sense that Grey version wouldn't make sense with the yin yang type of thing for black and white. But what is the excuse for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? We just have to find out. But where is our 
Pokemon Eclipse version that we want. A third ultimate game from Game Freak. Like, where is that? And, like, obviously. Also, the remakes are not really a surprise. Like, I know they want to make remakes so new fans and, and old fans could enjoy it with these added features and new Pokemon that came from the newer games. So, this was no, no surprise for me. So, let's continue on. 2K news. 2K18 needs an internet connection and requires space to play some of the modes on the physical version of 2K18. Nintendo gave an official statement of these new type of Nintendo Switch games. Quote, if you purchase a physical version of a game that requires an additional micro SD memory card, you'll be able to play a portion of the game right out the box. For example, specific levels or modes. To enjoy the full game, downloading additional data is required. Depending on the storage requirements for each game, it may be necessary to purchase a micro SD card to expand the storage space. When purchasing a digital version of the game, it may also be able to necessary to purchase a micro SD card depending on the game storage requirements and the storage available on the consumer Nintendo Switch console. I know a lot of people are saying it's better than downloading the whole disc like the Xbox One and PS4 version, but they're forgetting something really important. The Xbox One and PS4, you don't necessarily need to download anything, you just download from the disc. Um, but the Nintendo Switch, you necessarily need internet to get the full game. The Xbox One and PS4 version, you don't need that. Just download straight from the disc like I just said. Unless you want the day one patch from the PlayStation 4 Xbox One, you don't necessarily have to go on the internet unless you have internet modes, like online modes. So this is the, I understand this is Nintendo's way of compromising to hold huge games on a 32 gig card, game card, because the minimum is 32 gigs, I heard in a rumor that they got two 1 gig cards, 2 gig cards, 4 gigs, 8 gigs, 16 and 32 gigs. And that most likely the developers don't even want to do the 32 gig card because it costs more money to them. So it's possible that this is a like a huge compromise for developers that don't want to do that. Get a 16 gig card and the rest they download from the internet, they get the full features. Let's move on to some disappointing Splatoon news for me about the Splat Fest. Team Invisibility had a slight edge in popularity by just 1%. As for battle, Team Flight led the way by just a few percentage points. The final result was 2 points for Team Flight and 1 point for Team Invisibility. This is the first rant I'm gonna have ever on YouTube. I don't normally ever do this. But why did Invincibility lost this Splat Fest? It didn't make any sense. Invincibility players, I am disappointed. They could have increased the team score. I would love to play team battles to increase that team score. But I don't got any friends that got the Switch. I have I have no one really on my friends list, so I have to go solo. Uh, other people and other people lose too much. Like, come on. Like, I played 20 matches, alright, 20 matches, and I won 15 of those matches. It, it wasn't even close like the last two Splatfests. We were completely destroyed, but man, I'm just, I'm angry right now, but I am telling you that my bad luck is going to end. I'm going to win the next Splatfest. I hope my team win the next Splatfest. I'm going to make sure, like... I'm gonna make sure that I win this Blackfest. I'll be playing all day the next Blackfest because before I had it most, I have more important things to do, like important things to do. So I wasn't able to fully play the Splatfest like the other two. The, last, the other two, I made it to the max rank in the Splatfest, but this one I couldn't even make past. I think I only passed the uh, champion. Is it champion? Yeah, I reached champion. I think. I think the highest is king. So, yeah, I'm gonna win the next Blackfest no matter what. I am telling you. I'm gonna eat my words if I didn't. If I don't, I hope I win. Let's move on to the last news of today. Previously, at Gamescom, Tabata, the Final Fantasy XV director, hinted plans for the Nintendo Switch. Tabata gave an update, and most likely, Square Enix set to damage control and clean the mess he created. And now here he is trying to clean up his mess. And he, what he said was really interesting, saying, right now, a definitive 
decision has not been made. Screenix has been experimenting with the Switch to see what sort of specs the system can provide and what it's capable. The Luminous engine was tested, but it seems that Square Enix can't bring out the most of the engine on Switch. So this dropped the possibility that Final Fantasy XV will be coming to the Switch. And it looks like they are testing the Luminous engine. So they can't say, we can't say that Final Fantasy XV can't come to the Switch if they're testing it, if it's possible in the first place. That's my understanding, and I hope the testing goes smoothly. So yes, it's about time to end my video. I would love if you subscribe to help expand my channel and share the video if you think you can inform someone else. And comment below about your opinions about these articles. So this is Takemi007 and I see you in the next one. Peace.